In this tutorial video, we are finally going to import our 3D object into Adobe Illustrator and manipulate it within Cineware for Illustrator. And the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that the file is saved. So simply choose File, Save, and then jump into Adobe Illustrator. Now, I am going to assume that you have already installed the Cineware for Illustrator plugin. And you'll want to switch into the 3D workspace because that workspace includes all of the palettes that we need to work with Cineware. Now, in order to bring the C4D file into Illustrator, we simply use the file place command and choose any C4D file. So we'll choose the file and hit place and we'll get a placement icon here. And we can cl simply click or click and drag in order to place the artwork. Now you'll notice that the artwork here is in a wide aspect ratio, a landscape aspect ratio, and that's matching the default render settings in Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D defaults to an HD screen, but in this case our mug is more or less square, and it will work better if we're placing and working with our mug artwork in a square proportion. In order to set that up, we simply need to return to Cinema 4D and edit the render settings by clicking the clapboard here with the gear icon. On the output tab, you'll see that the default width and height are 1280 by 720. The actual resolution here doesn't matter as much as the aspect ratio between the two values. So we want to set this so that both the width and the height are the same. We'll just set the height to 1280. This is going to give us a square box within Adobe Illustrator. Now we'll just go ahead and dolly the camera in by right dragging on this move icon in order to make the mug more or less fill the screen. And we'll save the file. When we return to Illustrator, you should get a box that prompts you to update the C4D file. And you'll simply click yes, and in just a second, you'll get an updated box, which is now square. Now using Cineware for Illustrator, you can choose between various cameras. You can manipulate the camera view. You can change the render settings and adjust the properties of the various objects in the scene. The first thing that most people are going to want to do is to apply a texture map to specific aspects of this model. So in order to do that, we want to set up a template for the outside texture of this mug. So let's pan over to the side here and enter the edit artboard mode and simply drag out a new artboard. Now the dimensions of this artboard are important in order to match the dimensions of the label of the mug so that we don't have any distortions. We know that the height of the mug is 10 centimeters, so we'll enter a height of 10 centimeters for this artboard. You'll notice that you can simply type 10 centimeters and Illustrator will automatically convert to whatever your active document unit is. Next, we need to set the width of this artboard, and that's a little bit more tricky. Now, you might remember that the cylinder that we used to create this mug was 8 centimeters in diameter. And simple geometry tells us that the circumference or the distance around the circle is the diameter times pi. Pi, of course, is 3.14. So we'll multiply 3.14 times the 8 centimeter diameter. Go ahead and make sure to type CM after that so that Illustrator knows what unit we're working with. And Illustrator will do that math and figure out the correct width in the current document unit. We'll just move this over so that it's not overlapping the artboard. So now we have an artboard that is the exact correct proportions to wrap around the outside of this mug. Let's go ahead and try that out. We'll go ahead and draw a rectangle and snap it to the proportions of this artboard. We'll go ahead and click on the fill here in order to set one of our swatches as the fill color for that rectangle. Now we'll activate the text tool and simply type some text. We'll use the text front. And I'll go ahead and scale it up. And 
now we will select both of these elements and we need to apply these to the mug. Now the way we do that is first by looking into the scene structure window. And if you twirl open the mug SDS here, you'll see the mug underneath. We'll twirl the mug open and here you see the mug outside. This is the selection set that we created for the polygons that make up the outside of the mug. If you look here, you have a texture tag icon, much like you get in Cinema 4D. And once you click on it, the attributes window will pop open. And this shows you the attributes of the material that's applied to that selection set. So here we could simply click and adjust the color of that, or we have a texture slot. Now, in order to populate the texture, we simply drag artwork from Illustrator here into this texture field. And once texture is highlighted, you can release the mouse. And now you can see that that texture is applied onto the mug. And we can, again, roll around here to see that there is the texture. It does not look distorted. It looks pretty good. And we should see once we rotate all the way around here that the black line along the handle here is the stroked outside of our rectangle. So if we go ahead and eliminate the stroke, we will get rid of that black line. Now because we're making this into a template, it's a good idea to match the basic setup of the templates that are provided with Cineware for Illustrator. So people kind of have some context. So let's look at one of the templates that's provided. And you can see here that we have a color that's sort of a lavender that's being used here for the front texture. So we'll go ahead and use that color, which is 25.38 cyan and 11.1 .1 magenta. We'll go ahead and switch over here and change that color here. We'll just estimate at 23 and 11. Now we'll go ahead and copy this guidance text into our scene as well. So we'll go to the layers panel and here in the texture tab you'll see that we have groups. If we unlock we have groups for all of those text elements. We'll go ahead and select all of those and copy them and return to our coffee cup template and paste and we'll just move those pieces of text into place. We'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit and we'll go into the artboard mode and move these artboards so that they fit roughly with the text and this artboard here will go ahead and size down so that it matches the size of the placed art and we'll go ahead and move this 3d artwork label over that artboard. So now we have a basic template in Illustrator for this coffee mug. Now another thing that you'll want to do is knock the background out so that you can place artwork underneath this coffee cup. And the way you'll do that is by selecting the placed artwork, going to the transparency drop down here and choose alpha. Now you can see the white of the artboard underneath the placed art. Finally, I want to make a note here about the environment. You'll notice that you get a certain quality of reflection here in the draft or OpenGL mode, and that won't be the same quality of reflection that you get once you enable the render engine. And that's because the viewport contains a reflective environment that's not included when you render. So what we want to do is go ahead and create that reflective environment in the Cinema 4D scene so that it's available when people go into the full quality render as well. So we'll return to Cinema 4D and we'll close the render settings dialog. And what we need to do here is add a sky object. You'll find that here in the scene objects dropdown. Just choose sky. Now the sky object is basically an infinite sphere that surrounds the entire object. And we're able to apply an image to the sky which is going to be reflected onto the object. 
the type of image that we typically use is a high dynamic range image or HDRI. You'll find lots of these on the web, but you can also find them within the content browser. Simply activate the search bar and search for HDR. Now these are images that are shot in a way that they include the darkest of darks and the lightest of lights. So you get very dynamic reflections. And they're also typically delivered in this format that wraps smoothly around a sphere. So we can choose between a few of these HDRs to see how they'll look on our object. Let's go ahead and create a new material by double clicking here in the material manager and double click again on the material swatch to open the material editor. We'll rename this material sky and we're going to deactivate the reflectance channel and work only in the color channel. Now with many of these that include the .hdr extension, these are the actual texture files. You might find others that don't include the HDR extension that are the materials directly. So in order to tell the difference, the easiest way is to simply try dragging into the material manager. And if you get this icon here, you'll need to drag directly into a existing material. So we'll just drag from the content browser into this texture slot in order to link to that texture. Then we'll close this up and drag this material onto the sky. And now you can see that the reflections on this mug changed. If we choose another one of these, say this forest road image, we can go ahead and double click and drag the forest road in. And you'll notice that the reflections changed again. I actually like the orange and blue hues and the color that we get from this Alex's apartment HDR. So we'll drag that one back in and use that. Now, in most cases, you won't actually want to see the sky and that's easy to fix. Simply go into the objects tab and right click on the sky object. Choose Cinema 4D tags and compositing. Tags basically add special properties onto objects, and the compositing tag is used to adjust how the object will render. In this case, we want to disable the scene by camera option. That's going to hide the sky, but we're still going to have it be seen by the rays that are used to determine the reflection and the refraction of this object. Now, if we render here in Cinema 4D, you can see those reflections. And if we go ahead and save and return to Illustrator and update, you'll see that we get those reflections here within Illustrator as well. Now, whenever you're using an HDR or other texture within your template file, you want to make sure to save it out within the template folder structure. And the easiest way to do that is to use the save project with assets command. We'll click that and go ahead and simply type mug template. And what this is going to do is create a folder named mug template. Inside that folder, we'll find the project file and a text folder. And inside that text folder, you can see that we're getting the HDR image that we added to the scene. We also have the reference image that we used earlier for modeling, and we can go ahead and delete that. Now we want to make sure that our link is updated here in Illustrator. And we can do that from the Links panel. So choose Window, Links. And here in the Links panel, we simply want to update this link. And we'll do that by choosing the menu here and choosing Relink. And we'll go into the Mug Template folder and choose the Mug Template C4D file here and choose Place. Now we're sure that we're linking to that same file that we just resaved with the project. And that's the basic setup that you need to understand for creating a template for Cineware for Illustrator. Now I didn't get into the details of all of the different things you can do with Cineware for Illustrator because we have a separate tutorial series here on Cineversity for that. There's also a lot of different things that you can do to customize or provide additional features within your template adding lights and shadows and shadow catchers and reflective floors and things of that nature. 
and we'll cover that in other Cineversity tutorials as well. I hope that you enjoyed this introduction to creating a basic template in Cineware for Illustrator and got a feel for how things work within Cinema 4D. Uh -huh.